This is Greg Gagne, and you're listening to In Your Head, online.com. All right, we're back, and we're joined again by the living legend, Larry Zabisco. Welcome back to In Your Head. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Nice to be uh, in someone's head, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're always in the, the minds of all the fans. Or you could turn that around. What was that? Never mind. Go ahead. Well, what's the new? How's your show doing? <laughs> I Pretty think good. Larry's working blue. Yeah, we're all doing good. You're going to be at the big uh, Return of the Legends uh, this weekend, October 7th, at Kokomo, Indiana. Yes. For more information, you can visit <laughs> WCW. Yes, sooner. No, I'm just telling everybody. They can visit <laughs> oh, okay, yes, I will be there. Yes. <laughs> I was telling, uh, you can visit WCWARules.com. You enjoy going to these uh, these meet and greets with the fans? Oh, yeah. I, can, I have a good time with that. It, uh, yeah, I can, Get to see some old cronies because I really don't keep in touch with anybody. Most of the guys are nuts, but it's fun seeing them, and uh, yeah, it, it gives a chance uh, for me and the fans to meet after uh, all these years. So I enjoy meeting the fans too. So I uh, I have a good time with these things, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so I'm a little bit more involved in this one with kind of like a uh, overseer, kind of commissioner of the night, and we'll try to keep some things in order and get some things done with the fellow legends. But it should be a, a heck of a time. Yeah, early in the show, it's going to be a meet and greet with the fans, and then that afternoon, there's actually going to be a, a wrestling card. Yes, there will. Yeah. Are you going to be on the card? I, uh, I, will not, I, I will not be wrestling. I will be uh, in order, continuity, and uh, somewhat... Uh, I don't know, are there any more rules in wrestling? Is it purely catch as catch can now? Mm -hmm. But I mean, you got some you got some classic guys that are going to be wrestling, so it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting night. Yeah, definitely. Main events: uh, Great Pyramid Valentine versus uh, Tito Santana. Yeah, well, that'd be a good one. Those guys hated each other for years. You ever worked with any of those guys? No, oh, I beat them all. <laughs> you know, I used to yeah, Tito and you know Greg. It, it'd be a kind of interesting style because Tito's one of these guys that likes to move fast and uh, you know, very energetic. Uh, Greg's like the opposite side of the coin. He's just kind of like a lobotomy, living dead, but he just keeps coming <laughs> at you. And, he, and he's such a thick bone guy that you know, he just hurts you locking up with him. You know, he's, a, he's a brutal kind of individual, so I almost feel sorry for Tito. You better keep moving. Are there, is there any wrestlers like around that you haven't beat? Uh, there's only two guys that uh, I've actually. It's only because there was two guys that were afraid to get in the ring with me. So the so as long as we've all been in this, uh, you know, I, I never wrestled Hogan and I never wrestled Flair because they were uh, they were afraid to get in the ring. So that never happened with a couple different promotions. So. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, the living legend, uh, Clean House. <laughs> oh, you clean house with them if you get in the ring now. Well, I got a beautiful death mute now for that. <laughs> Let me call her here. Oh, he hung up. Oh, we had a caller, but he hung up. Also on the show, you get uh, some big guys. You get Kamala, King Kong Bundy. Do you enjoy uh, wrestling the big guys? Uh, I don't enjoy wrestling anybody anymore, to tell you the truth. Uh, big guys, little guys. I'm into golf now, you know, where it, it, it doesn't hurt much. But uh, in my career, when I was active, you know, other than Andre the Giant, who was, you know, just huge, and I wouldn't even mess with him. We were good friends, thank God. I uh, I had an easier time wrestling bigger guys because they were much slower, and uh, they'd get tired very fast. So, uh, you know, if you got in the ring with a guy who was, uh, you know, lean and mean and in great shape that could move as fast as you, it was a fight. If you got in with some of these big guys, the promoters would bring them in because the fans would like to see big guys. But uh, they were easier to handle because uh, they were slower and usually weren't good wrestlers. They were more like attractions. And then after five minutes, they'd be getting heart attacks. So. We got a caller here. Who is this? It's LTNA fan from the, from Chatham. Oh, okay. You got a, he's uh, from Portugal. If you can tell from accent. A TNA fan from Portugal. Mm -hmm. Right. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, you're on there with uh, Larry Zabisco. You got a question? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was a casino man. And, hold on, uh, hold on. We've, hold on. We've already got another caller here. Hey, they're just uh, the the phone lines are uh, exploding. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you go to uh, TNA fan. Okay. Um, uh, hello, hello, Larry. I uh, just wanted to ask you. This. Um, I know that back in a few years ago, you wrestled against Stang in, in the war games. And I want to ask you, uh, in, in a professional and personal wise, what, what is your opinion about Stang? What do you think about him? Uh, Sting, you know, Sting was um, one of these guys who uh, was never a very good wrestler. He was a flamboyant character. Sting in the early days was a... a a very good athlete for a guy his size, and he did some, uh, you know, some wild stuff. But uh, uh, he, he he matured pretty good. He matured pretty good as as time went on, and uh, you know we had an interesting time with him. You know when we used to lower him from the ceiling, but mm-hmm. he came back to TNA a little bit. You know in in. Uh, Help TNA with a little recognition. You know, Sting, he wasn't bad. He wasn't, like, as far as I'm concerned, he wasn't great. But in terms of the fans, uh, he had a good fan appeal because uh, I guess the fans were into makeup in those days. If you dress like Liberace and put makeup all over your face, you could uh, do all right. You're still a fan That's my gimmick. Uh, thanks for calling in, LTNA fan. Yeah, goodbye. Uh, I got another caller here. Who is this? This is my turn. That's right. Hey, this is Casino Man. How's it going? All right, you're on there with Larry Zbisco. Good question. Yes, uh, my question for Larry is: uh, uh, the last caller mentioned War Games, and uh, my question concerned uh, Wrestle War '91, the War Games match uh, at that pay per view. And uh, as I recall, uh, watching it as it happened, uh, Arn Anderson was supposed to be in that, but at the last minute, um, you know, you replaced him. And I just wanted to know. Uh, how that came about. How were you asked to be involved in War Games in 91? Oh, my God. How do you guys <laughs> remember that far back? 1991. Wow. You know, I remember one War Games where I broke Bobby Eaton's arm, but I don't know if that's the one that Flair and Arn was in. You know, No, I, it was the one before that. It was the one before that because... To tell you the truth, I really don't remember. I, I don't know if if I, I I really don't know. I don't know if Arn you know if Arn got hurt or or something. You know, I mean, if I took his place, then the only reason would have been at that time that he got hurt. But I, but I really don't remember. I think I think that was just after the AWA ended, and as I recall, I think that was the first time you made an appearance in the company. So I, I found that kind of interesting. That that was your first match in WCW, as I recall. Well, you guys know more about me than me. <laughs> back, back then, we were doing so much wrestling, you know, the days kind of blended in, the pay-per-views, you know, kind of blended in, and you remember bits and pieces, but, you know, in terms of going back in history and knowing who was on the card and who did what, my God, I don't have a clue. <laughs> if you have any plans of uh, writing a book, we could call it Casino Man. Well, you uh, keep the casino man in. I have a publishing deal. The book's half done. I'll probably have it finished before uh, next few months, mm-hmm. and uh, then they'll be publishing it, you know, sometime, uh, you know, ne- next year. So uh, yeah, I got it done. I got to finish the thing. I got about half of it done. It's pretty cool too. I'm about the only guy that's writing a book that actually wrote the book. Most right. of these guys tell a few stories to you know ghost writers and. I hear most of the books suck, but uh, <laughs> all the reviews I got on this one, I let a few people read it, and they're just raving about it. Have you read the publisher? Said you know, it, it was better than the. It's the best book he read, better than Cactus Jack's first book. I was gonna say that's uh, probably my favorite of the wrestling books is uh, the Foley book. Have you read any of the? Uh, yeah, well, the at least books? Nick wrote his. Right. Yeah. Definitely. What? Have you read any of uh, the wrestling books? No, I don't. I, I I didn't. I never read any because I didn't want to be influenced or anything. I just wanted to write mine my way, and I didn't want to read anybody else's stuff. I just heard about them. Right. Thanks for calling me, Casino Man. Um, somebody called in earlier about uh, Sting. 
Uh, do you think uh, the new signee for w, for uh, TNA, um, Kurt Angle, do you think that's uh, a big step for TNA? Yeah, I do. I um, I, I think it's a good step. You know, the, I'm not a big fan of bringing uh, guys in from, you know, the WWE. We, uh, we brought a couple of them, which, uh, you know, I thought was good. We had Lee's and Christian's, uh, you know... Uh, pretty decent hand and uh you know outside of a name which really aren't that much left that's worth a damn but uh, i like angle and uh angle i i don't watch mcmahon's show so i don't know what's been going on the last two or three years with angle but i remember you know some years ago and uh, you know know, he's uh he's very good angle and he's an he's an olympic athlete he's legitimate he's a He's uh, you know, one of the guys that should be uh, in the wrestling business, and uh, I think it'll be good for Angle too to get out of what, you know, whatever nonsense uh, you know McMahon's got him involved in, and to come to TNA where men can be men. Right. And plus, there's a I think whole it'll be for both of them. Yeah, there's a whole new crop of guys that uh, the fans can see him wrestle. Uh, you know, because he's pretty much wrestled everybody in WWE. Now you can see him uh, wrestle. Well, a whole yeah, and then well, yeah, you get to that. You know, wrestling's been in that qu- quagmire for for years already, and. Uh, you know, I tried to talk to some people and smarten them up already, but, you know, you, your audience wants to see a different match. You can't watch the same movie over and over and over and over <laughs> in the in the days of the territories. That's why they work, because every year, you know, you'd, there'd be different guys wrestling different guys. Mm-hmm. So I thought it worked out good for Kurt. It worked out good for TNA, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. He's a pay-per-view in Detroit, too. I think he's going to be there in Detroit, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to be uh, like the special force in the main event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, in fact, I heard he's a big fan of mine because he grew up in Pittsburgh watching me, but I never met him yet. So I'm looking forward mm. to meeting the guy. <laughs> um, do you think that's good for TNA to uh, move out of Orlando? Well, I think it's good to start taking the pay per views on the road, and uh, you know, because uh, to take, take the pay per views on a bigger, uh, you know. Bigger, bigger revenue, and and now that the TV's going, you got a lot of fans that would like to come out and see it live on that kind of level, you know. And uh, Universal, you know, all right for TV right now, but uh, you know, I think it's time for the pay per views to start hitting the roads. So. You got a caller here? Who is this? Loomis. Hey man, it's Loomis awesome. on the chat room. <coughs> right, uh, you're on here with Larry Zabisco. You got a question? Yeah, I wondered about how you feel about some of the factions that came after the end of uh, after the, uh, yours, which was the dangerous one, and it was like uh, one of the best ones ever in the history of wrestling, in my opinion. So, what? How do you think that y'all stack up with uh, like the NWO and DX and some of the other ones? I wonder how you thought, like, the uh, Dangerous Alliance stacked up with uh, some of the other factions in wrestling. Yeah, Dangerous Alliance. Well, the Dangerous Alliance? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, it, I don't know. Uh, the original DX, I guess, was okay. I guess that was pretty good. I guess, well, they're trying to rehash it now, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how it's doing now. Uh, the Dangerous Alliance was okay, but it was a short-lived thing because, of a couple of factions. One, I didn't like being in groups. So, you know, me and Arn were the enforcers at that time. And then the politics changed at WCW. And they wanted to put together this thing in group. And that's a good talent. And Rude was in it. You know, Steve Austin was in it. And, uh, you know, me and Arn. But I, I just didn't like groups because you could only get as... As far as the group, well, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't enjoy that. So I'm the one that kind of left the group. And at that time, I decided to go into broadcasting because the politics was starting to kill a lot of the programming. So I stepped out of the side. I mean, the Dangerous Alliance was good, but I, I don't think it was around that long, if I remember right. You said had a lot of talent in, uh, in the group. Did you see uh, Austin becoming as big as he did You know, at the time? Well, I, I don't think anybody saw Austin becoming as big as he did at the time. But that's one thing, and it, it, it rings true in this business. You know, 
the, the guys that become big, they have to be good. They have to be able to talk and, and be smart guys. And But you also have to be in the right time at the right place. Austin was a good talent in the ring, and uh, when he you know, wound up shaving the head and changing his look and wearing the black vest, uh, working for uh, Vince up there in the WWF, he came around at the right time when you could, when the language barrier was breaking on cable television. He was the first guy that was able to talk tough. Mm-hmm. You know, and TBS and TNT and all that, uh, we were very limited by the senses of what we could say. You know, what kind of words. I mean, you know, right. but, but Austin could go on TV and he was the first guy that could say, I'm going to kick your ass and I'm going to shove it up your ass. And he was the first guy that could talk like that and made his character, uh, you know, real good. He did a good job mm-hmm. with it, so. He did a good job, and you know he had the, the right uh, opportunity at the time. So he's the right guy in the right place. Yeah. Uh, you got any other questions, Loomis? No, no. Oh, thanks okay. for calling in, man. Okay, y'all take care. Yep. Uh, another guy in the uh, Dangerous Alliance was uh, Paul E. Uh, Dangerously. Uh, were you a fan of uh, his promotion, the ECW? You know, I I never saw ECW year even years ago, and Paul E. had it. Uh, I heard about it, but it, it would come on like, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Right. And uh, I just never stayed up that late to watch it. And then I heard about it, but the, I, I hear about it from the guy's side and not the fan side. Mm-hmm. And I was pretty disgusted with how, you know, vulgar and how brutal it was for the guys because they were doing all this stupid stuff and getting hurt and, and killing themselves. But at the same time, Paul, he wasn't paying anybody. He stiffed most of these guys. They lost thousands and thousands of dollars. So to me, it was like a horrible thing, and I, I never even paid any mind. Mm-hmm. And now I hear, and maybe you guys probably know more than I do, I hear this new ECW thing, which Vince is doing, I heard it's so bad that the, bo- the bottom's falling out of it already. It's so horrible. <laughs> right. Well, to me, I think the whole uh, the whole concept of ECW is kind of lost if it's owned by Vince McMahon because, you know, original one, it was like uh, anti-establishment and everything, and now it's owned by the billionaire. Well, you're right. I mean, it's just not the same. It's just like when he bought WCW, he killed that, too. He had no idea what to do with it. Um, do you think that was bad for bi- the business, like, um, you know, bringing all the hardcore, um, like the tables and uh, just, like, so many big bumps and everything? Because it made it uh, harder for, like, matches to really get over, they had to, you know, because they had to keep doing more and more. Well, yeah, well, I think the whole thing is silly because, uh, you know, it's like you said, it's meaningless now. I mean, these guys are falling off a 14-foot cage to three tables, but everybody's got to, like, lay around like they're morons while some guy piles three tables on top of each other. <laughs> and, it, and it's just, to me, it's dumb and it's ridiculously dangerous. Mm-hmm. And it's to the fact where I don't think the fans find it exciting. It's so overdone and the, that the whole hardcore thing to me was it allowed, guy, you know, goofy guys to come into a business that had no talent, just no brains, because uh, any wrestler is you know, not going to do it, and anybody that can't be a wrestler will fall into a, a tank full of thumbtacks. You know? right. Any idiot can do that. It's not, a, it's not impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone here in the chat room, he wants to know what you think of the possibility of the NWO uh, returning to WWE. We're talking about bringing it well, back again. They're really, you know, to me... Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. You know, the, the new world order that was with uh, the invasion of, uh, you know, Hall and Nash and, and then Hogan switching because no one cared that he was a good guy. Uh, it, it doesn't exist anymore. You know, Nash is kind of in and out. I don't know what Hall's doing. Six pack, I hear, has disappeared again. Uh, there, there really is no new world order left. Right. Yeah, they brought. I mean, they brought it back once, and uh, I think it was pretty much a failure when they brought it up, uh, back. It was yeah, like 2002. I mean, things like that are great in their time because they're there at the right time in the right place for that thing. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, what wrestling uh, fans have to look forward to is, uh, you know, pretty soon, especially in the TNA, because uh, the WWE does what they do, and they're stuck in that quagmire of just filling in skits with, you know, boobs and butts. But TNA's got some clever people uh, doing some different things, and, uh, you know, There'll be a new world order kind of thing. It won't be that, but it'll be something new that will be exciting because it's not rehashed. Yeah. It kind of goes back to what you saying about bringing guys in from WWE. You can just kind of, you know, rehashing somebody. You think the business should uh, just keep uh, creating new stars. Yeah. I mean, well, we've we got a lot of great new new talent that are... they got the ability to be stars. They just need the exposure. And... Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we're going to prime time, I think, in November 11th will be Wednesday. I believe it's a two-hour special. It's going to be on yeah. Wednesday night, 9 to 11, and then there's going to be some one-hour shows. But there's going to be a lot of two-hour specials, and that's only going to lead to the inevitable, the eventuality of the two-hour head-up, and uh, the uh, she is it will hit the fan again. <laughs> and, uh, and the fans will go wild. It'll be, it'll be great for wrestling. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you think that's um, something that really helped the the show if it was two hours to be able to get more people over, have more time to, uh, you know, expose well, more of the wrestlers? An hour show's okay, but now it, it just seems nowadays you need a little longer show. Uh, the hour show goes so fast mm-hmm. that uh, there really isn't enough time to to showcase things you got to showcase. You know, so a two-hour show, uh, you know, I think nowadays, for a main show, is, is, is what you need. You know, to, and, and that's where we're going. Uh, get a question, Intra, from the board. Uh, Glogo13 from the message board. He wants to know, uh, would you like to return to caller commentary? Uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy doing the, the, the color commentary for WCW. I... Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I uh, I have nothing against doing that. Uh, I could easily be talked into doing that. I, I, I like that. Do you have any interest in uh, booking or working more in, like, the creative role? Sometimes. You know, it, it, it's frustrating to be around 34, you know, glorious years and and know as much as I do. Not that I'm all that much smarter than most guys, but... I had the opportunity to be trained by guys that no one else did in a time when they didn't want people in the business. Everybody that knew the business was very nice to me and, and, and helped me out and taught me things that they wouldn't because of the politics I was involved in, mm-hmm. basically Bruno being my mentor. So uh, it's kind of frustrating, but the thing about being on a creative team that kind of holds me back sometimes is it's too frustrating because without the authority to do anything, it's a lot of head beating against the wall. Mm-hmm. And I just don't need to, that aggravation in my life anymore. You know, if someone said, hey, Larry, uh, you could uh, oversee this committee and you'll have the final say, I said, okay, I'll do it. But for me to sit there and talk to the wall, and then as someone who doesn't know what they're doing, not listen to me, it would just be too frustrating. Do you think it's better to have someone, uh, one person in charge, or to have a committee? Well, you you, you need one person in charge. You know, I mean, uh, it's nice to have a, a so-called committee <laughs> because uh, you need different people, you know, who know what they're doing with different ideas. But you need somebody to oversee the whole thing, or you're not going to have a smooth program. You're going to have four or five or six different points of view that get confused and are different and and, and don't give the show a continuity. Mm-hmm. It's hard to explain, but uh, you, know, you need somebody to oversee. I mean, that's why every company, you know, they have their board of directors and they have their chairman of the board and they have their president. The buck has got to fall with somebody. It, at least the WWE, for all of the nonsense they got going on, at least the buck stops with Vince. Right. And instead of a, a creative team coming up with a whole bunch of stupid ideas, Vince just lets a couple stupid ideas <laughs> go down. But at least there's someone there where the buck stops. Mm-hmm. 
and, and there's a, a you know a, a, a continuity to things. Uh, are you happy to see uh, Vince Russo come back to TMA? Well, I'm not sure if he's back. I heard the rumors he's back. <laughs> right. You know, uh, Vince Russo is a, is a very creative guy. It, 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 uh, you know, it all depends, you know, what uh, what he's learned in the last, you know, 10, 15 years he's been around. And he could definitely be a help. But again, he's a you know one of these guys that could be a help, but he can't be the final say because he just doesn't know it all. Right. He hasn't like been around long enough. Yeah, like you're saying with uh, Vince McMahon, if he would let um, you know a few good ideas go through, I'm sure Russo comes up with a million ideas, and I'm sure some of them are good. Well, that's the problem. The committee will come up with a hundred good ideas, but then they all argue about which ones are going to happen and all this, and then. But, but you need someone to say, okay, this is good. We'll do this and this and this. And but you, you need order. You, you know, you need an order. Right. Uh, you mentioned, you know, Bruno being your mentor. Have you ever thought about uh, bringing in your own protege? To carry on the living legend. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> well, what if someone would come to you and uh, would have like an idea for that? Would you be uh, willing to hear him? I don't know. It, it, it would have to be unique, and, and, and the guy <laughs> would have to be, uh, you know, uh, have a, a lot of talent and something right. really have to bribe me. And, you know, mainly because it, uh, it would be really hard for me to bring someone into this business because of the way it is. It, it's very hard to... <clears throat> to get a break, uh, you know, big, big money isn't like it used to be. It's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's very brutal. And, and a lot of the stuff these guys, you know, have to do to get recognition, they're not going to be walking around when they're 40 years old. They're going to be in wheelchairs. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's that brutal. Yeah, I mean, you look at some of the guys that, you know, wrestled when you were around, uh, like Bobby Eaton. <clears throat> you know, he was considered high flyer for the time. But he didn't do you know, nearly the moves they do now, and you know he's pretty hurting, you know, at his age. Yeah, well, he's still trucking around, you know, and I, you know, I've been very lucky. But even with all the matches I've had, but I didn't, I, I never, you know, went flipping out of the ring into the floor and bouncing <laughs> right. the cement. I mean, what, you know, you know, you can't, you just can't keep doing that. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, what you're saying there. Um, do you think it's easier to get into wrestling now because there's like so many schools and? In your know, small indies and stuff, but yeah, it's harder to make you know it what? to like the main level. The business hasn't changed. It's very, very hard to get into the business. There's only two places that I consider the business. Yeah, you know, the WWE, and now you got a you know TNA coming up, but but, but TNA is still you know it's growing. It's not a big giant thing yet. So. It's easy to get into a school because some guys, you know, going to take your money. Right. Well, that's what pretty much what I'm saying. And, and, and you're going to kill yourself, but it is very hard to get in wrestling. Mm -hmm. To make a career out of it. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's a million to one. <laughs> right. A uh, fan sent in a question. They want to know how uh, Space Mountain compares to Larry Land. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Space Mountain is just like Flair is. It, 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 it's a pretend ride. Larry Land's the real deal. <laughs> Space Mountain. I tell you, it, 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 Rick Flair, you know what's at the end of Space Mountain? The Internal <laughs> Revenue Service. <laughs> um, that's, his, that's, that's his Space Mountain. <laughs> When you see some of those guys, uh, you know, like Ric Flair, still wrestling, are you, you uh, glad? Let me, like you, uh, I assume you kept your money, saved well, your money. Yeah, well, I did, I did okay. I mean, I, you know, I don't, uh, I really don't work anymore. I just go off. I do the T and A. You know, weekend appearances and nostalgia shows. Get out of the house mm -hmm. and feel like me. I, you know, I like being me. I love the business. Yeah, you know, I'd love to, you know, right. do what I can with T and A in the business and meet the fans and then do this and that and. But uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I do some indies now, you know, once in a while. I don't mind doing it once in a while. But my God, Flair is, I mean, I feel sorry for the poor guy that he's so broke. He's got to keep doing this. But my God, he's almost what, 59, 60 years old, and I, 
a month ago, he's walking around ECW. He's got thumbtacks sticking out of his kneecaps, and for what? Boy, I think mm. he lost his mind. I, I, think, I think it's pathetic. Yeah, I don't even think the fans want to see that. I think they'd just be happy with him coming out. They don't. And, they and going don't want to see that. They don't want to see that. Yeah. It's really just pathetic. You know, it's too bad. Uh, how's the hair growing in? My hair looks great, brother. <laughs> I think in Detroit, uh, Detroit, I don't know, it's growing in better than ever. Cool. Now, when Raven cut it, were you uh, afraid um, you might get a little uh, rough there, like uh, Jim Mitchell did to him? Yeah, I was afraid. Christ, he's insane. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a silly Raven question when you see him. He wound up there, and <laughs> I was petrified. I couldn't wait to run out there that night. <laughs> I think we'll I don't know how he got back in the TNA. Gee whiz, what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about his new hair color? Well, you know what? I, I, I just keep my distance from him because he's nuts. <laughs> but, like, uh, he, he's another one of these guys that lost his mind. One week it's blue. L last time I saw him, he, it looked like it was gray. <laughs> uh, someone else right. wanted to know... Was that? There's some very weird characters in this business. Right. Do you think that's something you need? You need, like, a character that really stands out to make it in the business? Well, you need a character that stands out. But you're not going to get a character that stands out because, I mean, we've already had the biggest guys. Mm -hmm. And we've already had the most, you know, ridiculously dressed guys. And we got guys pretending to marry guys. <laughs> so there's no one that's going to stick out because of some stupid gimmick. But, but there are guys that are going to stick out because they have a, a great talent and they have a charisma. And that's why you get, you know, one in a million is going to stick out because there's, there's not that much, uh, you know, in, in any field, whether you're, uh, you know, in the in front of the camera anyway. You're going to need a, a special talent to make in this business now, or, you know, marry a guy's daughter. But other than that, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what do you think about that, uh, uh, Triple H uh, marrying the boss's daughter? Well, I can't. I can't not. I, I, marry, I did the same thing. Right. Follow, he's following oh, my footsteps. <laughs> well, maybe that could be your protege. Yeah, there you go. Vince would love that. <laughs> uh, someone else wanted to know, how often do uh, people misspell your name? Every day. <laughs> yeah, and every day. It's, it's a tough name. It's, it's an old Paul Lachman. And, uh, you know, even the Zabisco is even not the easy way to say it. Zabisco, the way they say it in Poland, kind of slurred together. But uh, my name should be either on Final Jeopardy or the selling B for, like, the big question. <laughs> Anyone ever want to change your name, like any promoters? No, no. I mean, no, you, that was a waste of time. Yeah, after the Bruno thing, you know, my name became, you know, very big and well known, and synonymous with that. And then, of course, as time went on, you know, me being around TV so much kept the whole thing alive. But it would just be stupid. It would it'd be like, why? If, if Hulk Hogan changed his name to Don West, did you go? Why did Hulk Hogan do that? It's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> it just wouldn't make any sense, you know. Oh. Yeah, Don West is really Hulk Hogan. You didn't know that? <laughs> oh, man. I'm a big fan of Don West. <laughs> yeah, Don's a nice guy. Nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you going to be at the big Kokomo, Indiana show this weekend? Yes, Colonel I Legends? will. I'm looking forward to it. There's a whole bunch of guys going to be there. Yeah, yeah Ricky Morton. Well, Ricky Morton. Even J Jimmy Hart's going to be there. Yep. And uh, Brutus Beefcake. Wallace, dude. Beefcake is... Still alive? <laughs> My God. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Hammer Santa Tito match. Oh, definitely. I like to watch Greg wrestle, but he's just like, to, he's like wrestling a zombie. coming <laughs> at you. Speaking of, there was the zombie at the ECW. I'm sorry, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I mean, it was a naked zombie, the way they do that stupid show. <laughs> We also got uh, Molly Holly, Sonny, you know, formerly Sonny Timmy Sitch, uh, Johnny Fairplay. Why? 
I don't remember Johnny Fair play wrestling. Do you guys? <laughs> no, I remember him in, uh, he was at TNA for a little while. But... Well, I don't know why, but we got rid of his ass. <laughs> Maybe you could come and see Larry take out Johnny Fairplay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Demolition Axe, former oh, Mass yeah, Superstar. Yeah. You check that out at WCWARules.com. Anything you want to tell your fans out there? I think it was going to be a great show. Anybody that can come to Kokomo, uh, it will be the return of the legends. I'm looking forward to it. it, it those things are fun. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of fun. We, we, we will see you there. Cool. Uh, of course, it'd be Coco Beware there as well, Birdman. With the well, bird? I believe I don't know. I think he has a new bird. Know. I believe it's uh, Frankie too. Oh, okay, because sometimes them birds outlive the people. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on. This is uh, your third time on In Your Head. You're tied for a record. We'll have to bring you on a fourth time sometime. All right, I'll start charging you now. <laughs> <laughs> you had your freebie. <laughs> Once you come on here, you just can't get rid of us. No, yeah, no, you guys are like a virus. <laughs> Well, thank you, guys have fun, and I'll see everybody in Kokomo. All right. Thanks. Really appreciate it. This is Christopher Cruz from World Championship Wrestling, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.